Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about card structure in Shopify. It is very important to understand what you should put in card and what are the necessary and requirement properties that you have to have in your card. In this screen, you can see the card I have designed. This is the slide card or the drawer card, the, which is a perfect card because I have added all the things you need. But in this video, I will go in each part and tell you why you added and how you add them so here is the example that i have added it also includes the discount code total savings subtotal everything subscription if product is on subscription it will display the period of subscription all of those are covered in here now it has it it has three the like uh, different parts first part is the header just displaying the count of how many product we have then you have the main content of the card displaying each item and the footer which displays summary of the card with the checkout here is the thing uh, let me go through the code you have a form in here the number one thing you have to remember your cost your card must have a form if you don't have a form that will still work the reason we put a form in here is because we sometimes have a, a card note in here some people have a card note where they dis add some note for the let's say a gift they are adding some extra information to that and that's why if you are submitting anything to the court it is going to submit that too now here is the thing the action is going to the court page the action of this when we click checkout it is going to the court but if we click the checkout it is taking us to the checkout the number one question you might ask it how is that like we are sending it to the court and it is a post request that's fine but how come it is sending us to the checkout uh, that is because our button name is called checkout if you name this button checkout it is going to take you to the checkout if you do not name it a checkout it is taking you to the cart page it is not where you take the checkout should go to the checkout page that is something that you should know now let's go behind the scene of the code and see these are all the things we added in the previous video the drawer and everything this is the close everything is working in here what i have added behind the scene is this form and it is using the route card url in here the method it posts and the height is full with a relative uh, position after that we have the header okay that's cool the header will display the card that item count as a json in here that is just the counter if you check inside the parentheses that is the counter great then we have continue shopping it is a button that closes uh, the drawer in here that is the same as closing in here but it is good to have a continue shopping in here because some people might not find the clues so they click continue shopping it will close the car they can still shop other products and that is in, that's good to have it but some people don't put it now be, after that we have the main product section in here so the main product we are going to um, check if card or item count is greater than zero first of all if we have anything to the card if we don't have anything to the card this message will show your card is empty i also added some translation to the general card translation if i open okay let me close this extra stuff so if i open the the en.default.json this is what I have added here. So if you are seeing an error of missing translation, make sure you have a translation under general, cart, title, continue shopping, empty cart, checkout, um, subtotal checkout, and saving. These are the ones I have added. So I am using those in my, ca my cart drawer in here. So first of all, this one is for the empty cart that will display um, your cart is empty. Just a simple text. Now, just an extra info I give you, why I put HTML in here, when you're extending, when you have like an extension of HTML in here, you can write HTML in here. That's the good thing, like you can put your empty, you have a card of empty, you can put a link, you can make it bold, you can put in this, uh, whatever you want, you can put like HTML, it will render that in here for you as, as a HTML tag, so it will not like escape it. That is something that you have to note about the translation. Next up, this is the button that close. Okay, that's fine. Um, I will I will remove um, my item at the end of the video, so you will see. After that, we have this. Like, if okay, if we have item in the card, 
we are assigning this total saving in here the total saving we want to calculate if we have a discount code and also if a product is on sale this product is on sale so that's why the total saving is six dollar and eighty cent now here is the bottom part what is it yeah this part is the footer this one and this above part is the main content so it is very easy to look through the product in here and then display each of them in this stack now beyond that there are some other things that we have to note first of all we say okay display a border bottom and it should be gray uh, unless it is the last one so if you have two products you see this line between them that is an, an easy hack so if it, this is the last one which is this one it will not display it that's why we say unless in here really easy now we have an image i check if item.image exists okay display the image using this uh performance type of image loading which we learned in the previous videos otherwise just display a placeholder you also learned that in the previous video this is a placeholder because this product does not have an image that is good to have it in here but not a requirement next up you have to link your product title so if, if someone click on this it should open that now it is opening a network because i press control okay now it is good to link the product so someone want to check more details about the product and that's why it is very good to have a link to that and also you can link the image i haven't done that but yeah feel free to link the image also now next up we have this item um, line level discount allocation it is going to check if product is uh, like having a discount so what we do in here is we are going to check the original price as well as the item price now what is that exactly so if i come to the card and check this json version of this uh, here is how what what you'll find it this is the line price this is the original price now okay let me not take the first product because the first product is not on sale the second one is on sale line price is this the original price is this so you can see like this is the original price and it is greater than the line price that's why we compare it against this two and if they are they are on sale we are going to add that to the item discount in here we minus the item discount in here and then we also display that in here item dot original price and item dot price in here that is also an important thing that you have to put uh, what else we need in here is okay uh, the other thing is that I have to mention is compare at price it is very important um, here is the thing compare at price is not available in the json it is very important like for shopify it is an easy thing to add okay in this we don't have compare at price when you check my card in here i can display the compare at price compare at price is very important to have in the card so the user see that i am purchasing a product in a lower level but that is not available in the json card the only way you can access it in the liquid that is one of like the things Shopify never added. If they added in the JSON, I could just easily send an AJAX request to the JSON uh, card.json and grab all the information and display it. Just because it does not have the compare at price, I cannot do this. I have to write everything in liquid. That is something Shopify never add. Um, yeah, so this is showing the compare at price for me. Now again, at the bottom, this one is selling plan allocation um, i know these are like very confusing while shopify could put some proper naming on this this one is if product is on subscription so if it is on subscription it will display the subscription name of monthly yearly or i don't know uh, whatever the the item has then it is going to say like you save extra discount in here i hard coded this this is the delivery time but you should put this in a translation file so if someone translate the theme they can translate the delivery also also you save extra you can put also this one in a translation file but i didn't put this is also calculating the percentage okay next up we have the variant title the variant title if it is a default do not display or if it has like no size something like that, that i have added some people say no color no size like 
or one size something like this but these are just an extra conditions I have written otherwise display the variant title what is the variant title let's come to the card you see this is small this is the variant title because this has multiple variant in this product next up we have this minus and plus currently it doesn't work it doesn't do anything but we will fix it in the future video for now let's leave it like that and then we have this remove icon in here which has an absolute position at the right and top three okay cool now next up is this footer this is where we display the total discount we see if total discount is greater than zero okay then display the total discount for us and what is interesting is the total discount actually this is completely extra we can completely remove this because we are checking the discount code in here anyway so this one is for the discount code I am running an automatic discount behind the scene this is automatic discount if you go to discount you have two types of discount automatic and discount code automatic will automatically apply to the card so this one is called happy if someone is spend ten dollar or more we will apply a 20% off discount that's why this one is applying in our card okay cool let's come back to the code this one is calculating the discount and this one is calculating the total saving now total saving is um, minus of uh, the discount code as well as the product sale price something like this so if this was ten dollar they have uh, now they are purchasing at three dollar then the rest of that will be a saving so I calculate that in here also it is very good feedback to give to the user that you have saved this six dollar and they can check out and yeah it will improve the conversion rate if you put that that way then we display the subtotal card the subtotal checkout button that's it that is how we design the card and this is how it looks now we can come here and increase the quantity it works in here but it is not reflecting in here that is the next thing that we have to fix when we bring any object to the card where you should refresh it you should not refresh it it should automatically update both of them at the same time now that is what we have to fix in the next video i hope this video has been informative thank you for watching and in the next video we will see how we can make this dynamic let me show you quickly what i mean if i go to this product you add product to the cart i want to update this it added this this should be five now it didn't and it should open the cart drawer that is what we do in the next video and that will be very very like comprehensive and you will learn some new techniques also uh yeah i will see you in the next video thank you again